I think we're all excited about the whole idea of a biomarker being useful in not only uh, giving us a prognostic with regards to multiple sclerosis, but also perhaps even following treatments and seeing if there is an effect at, at, at truly getting at the heart of the disease. We took our most aggressive group of patients that ended up in the uh, bone marrow transplant study in Canada, and we actually had all the serum uh, stored away, and when we looked, their baseline neurofilament levels were several orders of magnitude higher than even the typical MS patient. We correlated very nicely that the measurements in the serum actually mirrored that of the spinal fluid, so there was no advantage of measuring it in spinal fluid, which is important because patients, although they're quite dedicated, don't like lying down and offering their backs to us on a regular basis for lumbar punctures. So, uh, serum would be the way to go, and what we saw was following the transplants. In all patients, the uh, neurofilament level just dropped to uh, pretty well that of a normal person's, uh, giving us, uh, again, uh, uh, evidence that the uh, transplant really has done something to the heart of the disease. We are talking now about uh, achieving NIDA, or no evidence of disease activity, as an outcome for our efforts. Uh, this is probably something we wouldn't have even imagined uh, 10 or 15 years ago with the types of therapies that were on board then. But as therapies have evolved and we're getting into higher efficacy type therapies that offer reasonable safety profiles, we can start to broach that idea that we might be able to eliminate all evidence of disease activity. That would be a cure, and I think utopia, and what we're concerned about is, of course, people latching onto that and using that as a goal and moving through all the therapies very quickly only to realize that they're never going to achieve NIDA. Uh, but it's a reasonable target, and uh, knowing when to accept or go for NIDA and when not to uh, is an important thing that will come up at this and many other types of meetings. For example, uh, an early patient who has very mild disease, who is treated with, uh, say, an immunomodulator, who might have a mild attack or one or two lesions pop up on an MRI every couple of years, is probably not the same kind of patient who has fairly high level disease and whom even another attack might make a huge difference and lead them into disability. So you're willing to accept a little bit more in the early patient and a little bit less in the more aggressive patient. So in that, the second paradigm, um, NIDA would be something that you would really try to strive for. We are always asked to give the ideal therapy for our patients and more and more you're going to hear about the uh, personalized approach, uh, trying to identify which uh, patient or which drug or treatment is appropriate for which patient and there's really no way of knowing in advance. I think there's a patient profile that we have to uh, generates when we first see patients, if we're talking about initiating therapy or we're talking about switching therapy, it's that patient profile that's really important. Is this somebody who is imminently going to progress or is it someone who has fairly mild disease and, and has time? Uh, and then given the fact that treatment is for the long term in MS, we have to make sure that we're not putting them at undue risk by choosing a therapy that, that might cause more harm than good in, in the short run. So uh, I don't have a, a short answer for you because it's really personalized. It's to the individual patient.